Hey, this is the Dirty Mechanics 13 3932 bumper creation tutorial. This is segment one. I'm Sydney Landbauer, and today we will be going over the basics of our bumper. This is Mr. Potts, the lead mentor of our bumper creation. And for point number one, reading our yearly specs, what do you have to say on that topic? Um, it's very important to read the specs because they do change from year to year. Sometimes it's a perimeter limit and other times, like this year, it's a volume limit. So once you know the dimensions of your frame, that's very important to the size of the wood for the bumpers. Awesome. Now, for staying in the boundaries of the specs, is that tricky? How would you go about doing that? Um, for most years, it's not because the bumpers aren't included in the boundary. But this year, they are part of the boundary. So again, that's where the specs come in. But yeah, this year uh, it, we're finding it in, you know, you have to pay very close attention to stay within that boundary this year. Alrighty. Now, how do we attach it to both the robot frame? There's many different ways of putting it on, but how would you get it to stay? Um, there are several kits you can purchase that are made for like the Andy Mark frames or things like that, but we like to kind of uh, fabricate our own because we let the robot design uh, dictate how the bumpers will eventually be attached. We try to get it straight to the frame. Um, but like this year, we're mounting more towards the top so that it can hang down in front of the frame. Other years, we bolted it straight to the frame uh, because we've made a wide-faced frame. So, Amazing. All right. Now, for the corners of our bumper, we've how have we gotten to mitering versus just flat on? Um, over the years, we found that if you just leave the pool noodle square on the end and let it overhang, it does create some issues with the wrapping of the end and then everything fitting nice and tight. So from that point, we've gone to mitering. We have mitered the wood, but this year we're just mounting it to the edge of the frame so that it creates a gap like so and then mitering the pool noodle so that it all comes together in a nice square corner like that and then it makes it easy for the fabric to be wrapped because it can just go flush on this side and around instead of trying to create a little pocket for other designs that sounds amazing. Great outline for our first segment. Do you have any last tips regarding the base of the bumper? Uh, yes. Labeling the bumper sides is very important. In the past, we've said back, right, left, front. But depending on which way you're looking at the robot, left and right could be backwards. So we've gone to just labeling each side A, B, C, D. And then if you have a split bumper, that'd be an E but um, it's better that way. You don't have to think right or left. You just match A to A and so on. Way to go. Labeling is always important. Yeah. Hey, do you like bumpers? <laughs>